Hi, it's Tanya with Red Kernel Crafts, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about sketchbooks. I have a huge, oh well, two huge piles of sketchbooks here on my desk. I just want to talk about the ones that I own, why I bought them, what I like about them, what I don't like about them. And there's a few different types here, so I thought it might be interesting to you guys. And uh, so here we go. The very first type of sketchbook I had was this. This is not my original sketchbook. I don't know whatever happened to my very first one. Um, it was probably in college and God knows where that ended up. So I don't like these. <laughs> you see these everywhere. They have them at Michael's, Joann's, Blick, any kind of art store. They're like eight and a half by 11 size. What I don't like about them is the paper inside is fairly rough and I find it's like smudgy and I don't know. I've just never been a huge fan yet I own <laughs> three of them, and a mini size. So they come in different sizes. This one is pretty old. What's the date on this one? June 2003, and then I have 2003 on this. So that might have been a set. Like sometimes they'll sell them as a set. This larger one is funny because it's from 2003, and I was working on a children's book. I've got it back here. It's my Squirrel's Peanut Allergy shameless plug. I think the link is down below if you're interested. But I have all my drawings and all my notes from it. And I have a couple pieces of paper stuck in here. I even have a little piece of paper that Bryn wrote her name on. She would have been about four or five and she drew all her little heads. I even have a napkin that I had written the words um, for my book. We were in Wendy's one night and Scott was up at the counter waiting for our food and I had the kids with me and I just started writing on one of the napkins and it was just the text for, for the book and I just had an idea right then and there and I, I started writing it. So it's really neat. A squirrel looked like a cat back in the day, but you can see, I don't know if you can tell from here, but it's really smudgy and that drives me crazy. So um, that one is a Desairs brand. I have another one here. This is um, Caché. It's a Daler and Rowney book. I had bought this one in 2007. <laughs> I think I was just in the mood to buy a sketchbook that day. More ideas about Squirrel and I literally used four or five pages. <laughs> so I still have all of this. I'm terrible at starting with the very first page of a sketchbook and following through. It's such a bad habit. And then this one is a Canson brand. I bought this when I first moved to Seattle and I bought it. It was Friday, October 9th. And uh, the kids and I walked up to Blick Art Store and I was very excited. And uh, there's even notes in here of me arranging the garage and what my craft room was gonna look like and where I was gonna put my desk and everything. It's all little floor plans that I had worked on. And then it was notes about the furniture we were gonna buy at Ikea. And look at this, this is the sketch I had done of my craft room. And that's when I figured I would get these Trofast um, storage units. Then I have these ones with a coil thing on here. One of these is a watercolor book. This one? No. This one's a watercolor book and I did some pencil in it. <laughs> Where's the front? Here we go. All right, so I had done a Mickey drawing. This was back in 2008. So this is really thick watercolor paper. So you can buy these with, um, well, obviously watercolor. And you can buy it just with regular paper. I had done some Mickey sketches because we used to go to Disney all the time. And then I did a little watercolor handbag on there. That one still has quite a few pages in it. This one here, I had done some markers. This is when I first got my Copic markers and I had done some little drawings in here. So I have my guinea pigs, some little characters, a little duck down there. Some of these are on my website. My iguana, not iguana, what's he called? A chameleon. He's on my website. Um, this little girl, I have her on my website. My chicken. Trees, I love drawing trees. These guys are on my website. Oh, this I used, you would have seen this at some point on my channel. This is when I was like testing like Copic markers and just testing them out, but there is bleed through. That's the other side. It's nice to have a coil sketchbook like those ones have. And I have this one here. I would have bought this in Disney. It's a Vinylmation brand and it has 
an embossed picture of a vinyl animation Mickey, so you know I had to buy that. It's a really nice thick sketchbook, and it was only $12.95 at Disney. Sometimes when you're in the parks, it's like, holy crap, like stuff is not that expensive. And it's probably cheaper than the books that I don't like. What's nice about a coil sketchbook is you can fold the cover back, and you can draw, and you can fold your pages back. What I find with the coil though, because I'm right-handed, I tend not to draw on the left-hand side. And this was a book that I was setting up to just do like some finalized drawings. So this is my little Wizard of Oz. I think I have this on Redbubble as a design. You can get it on like bags and stuff. My Brady Bunch, I have that one on there. And then I started doing some Harry Potter. I did this drawing. I think there's a, a process video of me um, actually coloring that. And then I had the Chamber of Secrets, and then I started to do the Prisoner of Azkaban and the other ones, and I just didn't finish them. And I just haven't worked with my Copics in a while, but so I have this entire thing still available for me. So this works along with my whole not spending anything this year on craft supplies, because Lord knows I have enough sketchbooks to last me a lifetime. So this one has brown paper in it, which is really neat, and you can work with some white on it and it really kind of pops. This is an old lady that I did one time and she's got her little knee highs falling down there. I did this little guy. It was really fun to work with white as an accent. This is a little drawing I did. It was I was laying in bed one night and it was um, a little image I saw on Pinterest. Something's moving in my room and it's kind of freaking me out. Ghosts. Then I have this sketchbook. I probably bought this in Disney too. Uh, <laughs> what does that say? <laughs> Scott, go away. <laughs> He's sending me notes under the door. <laughs> I knew I heard something. Okay, at least it's not a ghost. So this one I bought in 2008. So I would have bought this in Florida. I love this, the little um, sketch guy on there. I thought that was really cool. But yeah, so nice sketchbook. Again, I probably used about 10 pages in here. Hang on, I use like this many pages in it. Buy a sketchbook, only allow yourself to buy one and then fill it. These I love. Okay, so these ones are from Barnes & Noble. The brand of these ones are called Working Class Studio. And I have three of them. I have the blue one, the green one. I I recently saw this. Well, it would have been a year ago, but I've seen this pattern still available in um, Barnes & Noble. Oops, hit my lamp. And then I have this one. Okay, I have one more. <laughs> but this one is called... Um, what's the brand of this one? This one's they now call them Punctuate. But uh, I love these sketchbooks. So this first blue one I bought, uh, oh yeah, and it says made exclusively for Burns and Noble on there. So these ones are called Working Class Studio. I had this one since 2007. Now in here is the beginnings of a project that I was gonna work on with somebody and I was so excited to work on this. We had just moved to Florida and my book deal for Squirrel had fallen through because my um, publisher was a nutcase and she decided to um, ditch me and um, go into politics. So I was kind of left high and dry and no longer had a book deal because she was wacko. So this was a project that was going to happen and I was so excited. And then the person changed their mind and that fell through. So very frustrating. So I only used this much of the sketchbook and then I was like, no. Yeah, it just makes me sad to work in this sketchbook now. But you know what? It was 10 years ago. Time to get over it. Use the damn sketchbook. I have all this paper. Like, stupid. And it would be a good, like, mental thing for me to, like, oh, you know what? That project didn't work, but let's work on something that is going to work in this sketchbook. This one here I bought in August of 2008. <laughs> I went through a lot of sketchbooks in... Um, uh, Florida. The only thing that drives me crazy about this ske these sketchbooks, the pages are perforated and this is what happens. They end up falling out. But what's fun is I have like my character designs. This was Squirrel because once my book deal fell through, I was like, you know what? I'm going to like 
rise above this and I'm going to redesign the entire book and change the character. And I came up with her new look. This is pretty much her. And I dated it October, what was it? October 2nd, 2009. So Squirrel no now had a new look. I used this book quite a bit. I have a lot of notes in it and stuff. And oh, I did good with this. So I used most of that one. Then <laughs> for my birthday, my friend Katrina gave me this one in 2009. I've used this so much. I only have a few pages left. Like, ah, uh, that's huge for me to have actually filled it up. And it's so fun to look back and see some of the drawings and stuff I did. Some of these I can't show you. This is actually when I worked on uh, my friend Louise. I designed her logo. I have that idea in there is when I was working on the sketch. And I have just like some fun little designs there, my little skeleton guy. I have these drawings that are on my website. So yeah, I just, oh, I have ideas for another book that I've been wanting to work on for years. I have the idea, I have the look, I just need to work on it. A year ago, I went out and bought this one. So this is the new brand at, at Barnes & Noble called Punctuate. So I bought this January, oops, January of last year. Here's my first drawing on there. I'm trying to go through it and actually like go page by page and fill things up. And there's stuff on here that I cannot show you because it's something I'm working on. But this was when I did the ideas. If you saw my um, recent video, I think it's on my other channel of um, the Christmas present I made for my dad. Um, it's the ideas and stuff that I had for that, the Dartmouth fairy, the clock, all those things that I added onto his um, Christmas present. And then this was uh, a picture of Scott and I at a party we went to recently. It was a masquerade ball <laughs> at the hotel and we wore Batman masks. So I have a lot of pages still left. I've actually been doing that picture I drew um, in that sketchbook, but um, I've been using a smaller sketchbook, which I'll show you in a minute. And I've been doing drawings every day since January 1st, and I'm trying to do a drawing a day. Um, I haven't done my drawing for today yet, but it's basically a sketch journal of every day. And it's really fun. It's on my um, Instagram, which is just Red Cardinal Crafts. And um, I post a, uh, a drawing every day. So sometimes I'm just doing it at work on my lunch break and I'll just do a quick little sketch. What's driving me crazy is I really didn't think I would keep up with it and I've done really well. I've done 26 days so far and I didn't put it all in one sketchbook. So it's kind of all over the place, but that's okay. It's all right. It's fine. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's just been a really neat exercise. It gets me drawing every day. And when I look back now through my Instagram, like when I see the drawing, I remember what was going on that day. So it's really kind of cool. Okay. So those are my main sketchbooks. Then I bought these ones and I would have bought, oh geez, these are actually older than those. I bought these in 2006 and I think I got them at like Winners or Marshalls or something like that. Wait, 2006, we we're still in Canada. So I would have got them at um, Winners and they were so cute. I think I paid like, I don't know, $6.99 or something for them. And they're like a little leather like journal. And if you've seen the Indiana Jones movie, um, The Last Crusade with Sean Connery, and he had his leather, <laughs> so stupid. He had his leather journal and he would draw on it and he would write in it. I was like, oh my God, that would be like my last crusade, like little diary thing. Um, so this one I've used for regular sketches. And then this one I've used for a travel journal and I've written down stuff on our trips. There's a lot of pictures from airplanes. This was the room we stayed in at the, at the Plaza in New York. I have some pictures of Bermuda pictures from the hotel. This is the hotel, the Fairmont that's over in um, Hamilton in this in the city in, in Bermuda. And it was a different hotel that we had stayed at. I have dad's front step because we were home one summer and he got some like a new addition added to his front step. I have pictures of when we went on a family cruise the other year and I've journaled through it. I haven't used it since 2016. 
But yeah, it's it's just kind of neat to look back, and it's just fun little drawings and just information about trips we've been on. So that's those are fun. Those are really cool. Then I discovered the wonderful world of moleskins. I love these little sketchbooks. Uh, I have quite a few of them. This is from 2013. This one is from mm, probably around the same time because it has my Bermuda address in it. This one has a Bermuda address in it. So I think every time we left the island, I bought a new one of these. <laughs> They're all Bermuda. And none of them are completely full. This one uh, I would keep in my purse and just do little drawings around the island and stuff. This one I was sitting in the living room one night and we were watching TV and I drew Scott's feet. There's a drawing of our chicken, Peach, and there's a drawing of, we we're in a doctor's office and I was drawing the people going up to the counter. This one here is really neat. It's a storyboard um, sketchbook. You can see the little uh, rectangles on there and it's to work out um, stories that you're working on. And then towards the back, like halfway through, you can just barely see it, but there's four squares coming down there and then space down the sides and then four squares coming down there. So you can just do little thumbnails of a book, which I've done further on and you can just break down what your pages are going to um, be like. So I love that one. This one here, I haven't used a lot. The only thing with, um, let me just grab a piece of paper. The only thing with Moleskine books is when you take a piece of white paper and you compare it, you can see that it's more of a yellowish type of paper. And yeah, it kind of, it bothers me a little bit, but only when I erase, because once you erase, it kind of makes it a little white. Um, it's almost like a weird coating of yellow. These ones seem really yellow though, compared to, let's see, a recent sketchbook. This one seems really yellow. Hang on. So this is a larger version. Yeah, see, it's it's really kind of yellow in those smaller ones. And maybe it's just a really old version. Maybe it's gone yellow because of <laughs> living on that crazy island. It's like a creamy yellow um, or creamy white. Then, as you saw, I have the next size up. These are like five by eight and a quarter, I wanna say. Uh, yeah, five by eight and a quarter. Love this size, they have a little um, strap that goes around them. The little ones do too. I just took the strap, <laughs> happened to take the strap off each of them. But yeah, they have a little strap that keeps it closed, which is good when you're throwing it into a purse or something. They're a really nice size. I really like these. I have um, a little bit of a problem. and <laughs> I like to collect these um, a little too much. I also buy the kind that have the lined paper and I use these for bullet journaling, which is great. It's just a way to keep um, a diary. Let me just show you a sample page. So you keep track of all your life and um, they have, they're a graph paper one. So it's got the squared um, paper like that. So these ones are about, let me see, I have a brand new one because you should always have a spare. They're $19.95, so a little expensive. The smaller ones are, I believe they're about $13.95. Um, I used to always get them in Hudson News the bookstore that's in an airport, <laughs> you can get them there. Um, you can get them at Barnes and Noble. You can get them at art stores. And I, you, I don't think you can get them at Michael's or Joann's, but you can get them at Blick and you can get them at, um, yeah, Barnes and Noble and Hudson News in an airport in case you're traveling. So I have a few of those, love them, use them all the time. I have one here. This was my um, sketchbook for Bermuda. I did like dockyard and I would travel around and I would like write um, about the place where I was. Um, this is Verdmont. This was Friday, March 6, uh, 2015. So that would have been one of my field trip Fridays. I always did these little field trips um, around the island, usually on a Friday. I have a video of me um, on one of my field trips and I was sketching this church. I was sitting on my scooter and I was sketching it in this little place, Hayden Trust Chapel. So I wish I had actually gone around more and sketched more. This is some stuff out by Dockyard. So it was really fun and it's fun that I wrote down what I was actually doing that day um, and how I happened upon whatever it was that I was drawing. And then I have, what's this one? Oh, this was me trying, <laughs> I was going to keep an entire Disney journal. So I drew this in this book and this was all going to be Disney. That's page one. Here's page two. I didn't do anything else in there. And then I had bought this 
and I don't know if you can see it, but it was a Disney version of a moleskin and I was all excited. It's hard to see, but anyway, it's Mickey holding a pencil and then down here it's like a little inkwell and then it's his little footprints leading up to here. And I thought it'd be a great um, thing to keep, um, like we we're going on a Disney trip and blah, blah, blah. And this was how I got, um, oh, it actually says we now live in Seattle, Washington. And um, my next dream is to walk where Walt walked and to see his original dream, Disneyland. So hasn't happened yet, but hopefully it will soon. And I drew that picture again, but you can see that the watercolor did not do well on this lined paper. I bought this and I was so excited and it, it was lined paper, but I thought it was gonna work and it did not. The other thing that came with it, this was really cool. It's a little Mickey Mouse drawing guide and it's all the little steps of how to draw Mickey and everything. So it seems really set up to be uh, a sketchbook and it really wasn't. And then the stupid thing is there's like Mickey stuff in here and there's a little pocket in the back but guess what? They didn't make it so that the drawing guide would fit inside. Like it, see, it doesn't fit. It's like all, ah, because when you get it, it's like tucked in the back like this. Cause even they went, oops, just stick it inside. Cause we didn't make the thing to fit. This is my um, Moleskine that I use in um, Seattle. This is uh, like my urban sketching sketchbook. This is fun to do as well. Like you do a drawing of all the stuff that you're carrying in your art bag, like when you're traveling around. So I got a little field bag from Value Village. And I paid $3.99 for it. And I even wrote that down there. These are the tools that I keep in my little watercolor um, thing. I've got my sharpener, my kneaded eraser, my eraser and my iPod. And I also have a little stool, but at the time when I drew this, I didn't have my stool. But these are drawings that I did around Seattle. I was with an urban sketching group. It's really cool that um, I was part of the, that group. I just don't get a chance now. I might maybe see if they're still going around and stuff and um, when I'm off in the summer, maybe try to meet up. That would be kind of cool. Anyway, so this is the kind that I buy. It's called um, Art Plus. It's the sketchbook like that. And you can get these in all different sizes. So the small ones that I have it's the same brand. You can get really big ones. And then I have these. They're also Moleskine and I highly recommend these. They're little sketchbooks. You get a set of three for about $13.95. I have a black set and I like them so much that I bought a set of red and I like those so much that I bought a craft set. Um, I got these at Barnes and Noble and like I said, they're $13.95 for the set of three. These brown ones, um, I'm actually currently using one to do my daily sketches and these ones are I'll just do this and accept the fact that I own them from <laughs> the plastic but these ones are actually a squared journal so it's the graph paper and I draw on it I think it's fun I like it what's nice about these sketchbooks is they're not as expensive as these ones these are $19.95 these ones you get the three of them for $13.95 but they're small they're small, small, small. So these are 80 squared pages. And I think the other ones are about the same. And it's just, it's a nice little sketchbook. You don't have to be too particular with it. These ones I've done like um, Disney drawings in them. And um, I did my little Yeti. He's on my Redbubble site. I have my partners. I had that one posted and I think um, Redbubble took it down. <laughs> I think it was a little too Disney. They would not allow it. I have my little castle here in the front. So they're just a great little sketchbook. They're thin. You can throw it in your purse. They're not that expensive. And you don't feel like, oh my God, I have this giant sketchbook that I have to fill. It's little and it's small and it's cute. And like I said, you can get them in different colors. So it makes it fun. So yeah, you can get these at Barnes & Noble. Anywhere where they sell um, mole skeins, you can buy those. So fun, fun, fun. The other thing you can do is you can get a landscape version of these. And this one is specifically a watercolor book. Sometimes I keep, there's a pocket in the back. Oh, here it is. Yay. So this is art plus, but it's a watercolor album. And you'll notice when you buy moleskins that the wrapper will have a certain color. So this is kind of a purplish blue and that's the art one. And then the one that has pink on the spine, that's the watercolor one. I mean, still double check. And you always get a little pocket in the back. So I always keep like whatever the book is, I keep it in the back so that I remember. At least I try to remember to do that. Kind of neat that there is a little pocket in the back. And um, this one I used 
when we went to Maui um, a couple summers ago and I documented our trip there we are on the airplane and just around the resort and stuff. And I dated each picture and I drew or I wrote like a little blurb about what was going on that day um, and what we were up to. And one of them, where is it? This one here, I simply wrote Friday, August 26, 630 AM. And we're going on a Hawaiian canoe at 8 AM. So it was just enough to remember what we did that day. This was Friday afternoon at the pool. So some days I wrote a little bit more depending on what was going on. This one here, I was sitting by the pool and I just put Saturday afternoon, quick sketch while the girls and uh, girls swim and Scott's back in the AC in our room. We just had lunch at Alma and that was um, the restaurant. I think I might've drawn that. Yeah, we had eaten there. And then I put quick sketch at the pool while the girls were swimming, then drove to Lahaina to see the shops on Front Street and dropped Bryn at the Westin to see her friend Melanie. So it's just fun to look back at the trip and remember this was at the adult pool. So it's just really neat. Now, of course, I didn't finish the sketchbook. This was on our last day. There was this whole fountain, so I drew it this way. I think I may have even finished painting some of it when we got back. And then the day after we got back, I started working and I never got back to, you know, finishing the painting of that. So I still have a lot left. So that just means we have to go back to Hawaii. So that's my Hawaii sketchbook. I have another one like that. This is a flimsy moleskin and I've never used it because it's really weird. The other part of it is it has perforated pages and I'm not a huge fan. And the pocket in the back is a little weird. It's just like that. So wasn't a huge fan of this one, but when I bought the watercolor one, I also bought the large one. Oh, this is so much fun. I think it was like 30, I wanna say it was 32.99. Don't quote me on that, but <laughs> that's what I have in my head. Maybe I still have the price tag on the thing. No, I do not. I ordered these online, I think. Um, <laughs> this, guess what I drew? <laughs> the Disney gates again. And I was really happy with how this um, drawing turned out. And I want to use this specifically to do some really nice Disney drawings in here of the Disney parks. And I'm just going to have to go off of um, photographs that we took over the years um, when we lived at Florida, in, lived in Florida. The other thing I do for finished drawings and paintings is I use, um, we have really thin walls and someone's running water somewhere. I apologize. When I do like a finished drawing, like when I worked on the, I hate my camera. <laughs> it just shuts off. It's like, you've talked too much. I must go now. When I do a finished drawing, like I, when I worked on my drawings for my book, I'll use this type of paper. It's not a sketchbook at all. It's um, Strathmore Bristol paper and it's a smooth um, texture. It says it's acid free, heavyweight for finished artwork, pen and ink. I've actually used watercolor on it and it works pretty good because it's just really nice, smooth paper. Um, and you just, you know, peel it out of the, the pad, but it's all like loose paper. And this isn't what you want to use if you're just doing some rough sketches. Um, I recommend like a newsprint type of paper. Like if you're going to like a life drawing class and you're doing really quick drawings, just use like a newsprint, like something it's fairly cheap and it's thin paper, but you'll go through a lot of it. Um, that's a good type of paper to use, but this is only 20 sheets and it's 1096 um, for those 20 sheets. So you want to be doing like a final drawing on something like this. This is watercolor paper that I use and it's called fluid and it's cold press finish. So a cold press finish, it's like kind of a, a bit of a texture to it. And uh, I, that's the only kind of paper I've used of actual watercolor paper. Um, I've used cold press. What's neat about this is it's the paper stuck down and then you just kind of unstick it. Like it's stuck along here and along the bottom and you can just use a ruler. Just be very careful because after you do a whole painting, you, the last thing you want to do is, is rip the paper as you're taking it out. I have this in a couple different sizes. It comes in like a square six by six. Um, it comes in this size, which is a nine by 12. I also have um, an eight by six size that I've done. I did little drawings a while ago. Um, there was like a fox and a bear an otter and a deer. And I did those on the smaller um, six by eight, but it's really nice paper. I like it. Archer's is really pricey paper. It's very nice. Apparently <laughs> I've never been able to afford to buy some because I think it's really pricey. So I know I've looked when I was in Blick and I was like, oh yeah, no, I'll, 
by the fluid. So this stuff is usually about, I think the six by eight set, you get 15 sheets. And I want to say it's about, I don't know, six ninety nine or something for the 15 sheets. So again, that's something you want to use when you're doing a final drawing. Now, I rambled on about all these sketchbooks and why you should get them and why you shouldn't. You don't even need to do this. Go through your grocery store and find a little notebook. Go through your kids' stuff. <laughs> see if they have a little notebook laying around. And if you're just brand new at drawing and you don't even know if you're going to like doing this, just get a little book. Like, it doesn't have to be a big thing. And then sit there in front of the TV or whatever and just do some little drawings. Keep it in your purse. Keep it in your bag. And go around with it. The other thing you can do, you can get the all my Canadian friends out there, the Canadian Hillroy Scribbler set. Uh, you get four of these. I think Walmart marks them down to like, what, 25 cents or something around school supply time. It's just lined paper. It's a little scribbler. But what I like is that it's all contained in the little scribbler, in the little book. Same with this. It's all inside and it's not loose papers. You can use loose paper, go to your printer and take out a piece of paper. Um, I've drawn on the back of receipts, like if I've been sitting in the car and Scott's pumping gas and I find a piece of paper, you know, in the dash or something and I'll just like draw a quick idea if I have something that I'm thinking about. But it's just nice to have it in a, in a scribbler and if you don't want to invest in a $20 sketchbook, you don't have to. Just get a, a little book. I also have these the little composition notebooks. Yes, it's lined. This one's actually squared. There's something about drawing on graph paper that I enjoy. Um, so yeah, and what I like about it is that you can use it for sketching, you can use it for different ideas and stuff, and it has a little square so you can keep things nice and neat and if you're trying to draw straight lines. It'd be fun for like drawing buildings and stuff because you can just trace the lines. But these are like, the ones from the dollar store are a little weird. The paper's a little strange in them. This one I probably got at Target. And they're like, I don't know, two something. If you go around school supply time, they will mark these down for, to like know, 50 cents or something. So just something that it's in a book and oh, this is my sketchbook and, and you can carry it around with you. But yeah, so there you go. That was a lot of talking. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I really recommend keeping it all contained in a sketchbook and don't rip the pages out that, oh my God, if you took like something like this and ripped the pages out, I would have to like show up at your house <laughs> and like yell at you. Because that's probably why the other ones you can, the pages are perforated and you can rip them out. Oh, the other thing too, is if you want to do some drawings and you want to scan it, think about that too. If you're going to end up scanning your drawings, because you might want something flat like this. Maybe you do want a sketchbook where you can rip the pages out if they're perforated to lay them on a scanner. Because if you have something with a big coil and stuff and, and you're trying to put it flat on a scanner, it's not going to work that well. The other thing I have for drawing is my drawing tablet. I've talked about this before, I think. It's by Wacom. They're pricey little suckers. I don't recommend that right off the bat. Maybe later if you are going to be doing some computer drawings and stuff, it's wonderful. I love this thing and I've used it so much since I bought it, but they're, they're pricey. So yeah, maybe, maybe start off with the 50 cent book um, and then move up to that. I say commit to a sketchbook and keep your drawings in it and you can see your progress and see like how well you're doing with it. And the thing about a sketchbook is you don't have to show anybody. You don't have to do like I'm doing and go on the internet and, and share with people. It's like if you were a writer and you wanted to, or you kept a diary or something, you don't run out and show the neighbors. You don't show it to anybody. So you don't have to show anybody your sketchbook. And it's, it's there to make mistakes. You can draw on it. You can erase if you want to. You can go, what the hell was that? <laughs> and start over the next day and draw something. I am going to come back with another video about how to get started drawing. I, I want to do a video about different tools, different pencils and markers and all that, that good stuff. So I'll come back with a video about that too. When I got started, just a pencil. It's just, just a HB number two pencil. That's all you need. And that's usually what I draw with. I have started using mechanical pencils and I find them enjoyable. I have one here. They're the Graph Gear by Pentel. This is a 0 0.5. I prefer 0 0.7. Um, I have that one in my purse and I take it to work every day to do my daily sketches. And you just, you know, just an eraser. I like white erasers. Um, if you got a pink pearl laying around from years back, just use that. But yeah, just do it. It's fun. And I'll be back to teach you a couple little things to draw and a couple little things you can try. And, and like I said, different things about tools and stuff that you can use. All right, sketchbooks, go get one. What's today? Saturday. Run out tomorrow. 
my stomach's growling. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop talking. All right, so sketchbooks, it's a good thing. Okay, I'll be back with some more videos soon. All right, take care, guys. See ya.